More often than not, I get asked for recommendations of easy weapons to use in Planet Side 2. A question that normally comes from newer players who are just getting into the game and learning the shooting mechanics, looking for a on-ramp weapon that'll help them ease more into a rhythm with the gunplay. So today, I figured we'd offer that exact guidance. G'day there once again viewers, your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today we're going to talk about some of the easiest weapons to use in the game, this time focusing on the new conglomerate armory. So folks, if you haven't already seen it, this video is a continuation of the same video we did for the Terran Republic Armory about what, a week or two ago now? God, time really has flown by, honestly. But anyways, if you have yet to check out that first video, the goal of this mini-series, I guess you could call it, is all about assisting new players in picking out some weapons that are solid choices for, well, a new shooter, as far as the mechanical skill is concerned. Weapons that come with some characteristics that make them easier to use, if you will, but also have the firepower and the general usability to take you a little bit further in your journey. Weapons that teach you important skills or give you some cool answers to the problems that you'll face in game, but are again, relatively easy to grasp and use. I know you'll often hear a lot of players, myself included, always tell new players not to spend their certs on new weapons because, well, them class upgrades are often a far better return on investment. But truth be told, there's something to be said for some variety in your weapon selection. So without further ado, let's get into some weapons today. Now, to start off the video, I'm going to turn to a weapon that, believe it or not, has a very special place in my heart, the Razer GD23. The reason it holds that special spot for me is because it's the first weapon I ever bought in Planet Side 2. Like, ever. This was before I knew what weapon damage models were, what recoil patterns were out there, all that stuff. This was a totally blind purchase because I think I liked the look of the weapon, honestly. It just so happened to be also one of the easiest weapons to use in the NC arsenal across the board, sporting a recoil pattern that almost feels as though it's doing the work for you. Seriously, if you're ever looking for a poster child for the whole low recoil characteristic, this is it. Now, yes, this does mean it sacrifices a little bit of raw damage output to achieve this. While it may still sport a similar damage per hit to that of the default AF-19 Mercenary, it does lack in the rate of fire department to make its competitive edge kind of fade away, especially for an aggressive player. However, where the weapon really comes to you, if you will, is as you start to really hone in on your crosshair placement and start cracking those headshots. Scoring headshots with this weapon becomes really rewarding really quickly, and the weapon paves the way for you to do that as a newer player quite easily thanks to the recoil pattern. And that happens out to surprisingly good ranges for that matter. So it even lets you sit back a little further and just sort of pluck away at bad guys at a distance and at a distance that works for you no less. It lets you focus on working on that crosshair placement without demanding you to dial the aggression to 11, a really good weapon for a newcomer to the game and to a new starter. But moving on and completely changing the tune here, we move on to one of the most revered weapons in the game. Players on the new conglomerate look at this thing as though it's a god, and enemy players on other factions have been known to test their allegiance when faced with an opportunity to use such a beast. Yep, we're talking about the AF Force Cyclone. Unlike our previous weapon, the Cyclone demands aggression from you as a player. It requires it of you to be effective. It also sports a relatively small magazine, which does teach you some very important lessons in the world of pacing and knowing when is too much. So based on that, it doesn't sound like the easiest weapon to use, but by the sheer virtue of its firepower, it is one of the, if not the easiest SMG to use in the entire game when it comes to actually killing people. Very few weapons come close to this weapon's raw time to kill potential, and that's not even throwing headshots into the mix at all. The body shot potential on display here allows poor buggers to catch you by surprise, only for you to pull the Uno Reverse card on them and send them to the Shadow Realm. Throw in that glorious hipfire accuracy as well, and the weapon is a point and click machine that still rewards you for your hard labor. It does cost a pretty penny to acquire, so it'll require a little bit more overtime from you in the trenches, as it were, but the advantage here is that it's a weapon that can go on every infantry class in the game, so you're effectively expanding your capability a lot more than what you would say with an LMG or an assault rifle 
powerful purchase. Especially on the Infiltrator class here, it unlocks a whole new side of that class's capabilities that were once unavailable to you, so go forth and wreak havoc. Now, my next pick for the easiest weapons on the NC list here may come as a bit of a surprise to you all, but allow me to explain. Yes, you are in fact looking at the AF-20 Rogue, aka the burst fire variant of the AF-19 Mercenary, which again may sound a bit strange. Burst fire weapons are typically known for hitting hard, but demanding even more precision from the shooter because, well, if you miss a burst, then the outcome is even more costly due to that refire time. And hey, in theory, a burst fire weapon is just what a player with some practice can do anyway with an effective trigger finger, right? Well, the NC burst fire weapons are in a unique position because they are two round burst fire weapons. May not sound like such a big deal, but with how Planet Side 2 handles recoil with burst fire weapons, this means that every first shot of a two round burst is going to fire with a significantly reduced recoil pattern. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty details as to how this is the case, but the end result is an extremely useful weapon that lets you click heads at an alarming rate. I've picked the carbine here in particular over the AR because the carbine can be taken on a light assault class, which really lets you get in some incredibly annoying spots for your opponents and just plink away at targets. Seriously, if you're a new NC player, do not sleep on this burst fire carbine. It's an amazing choice. But moving on, and it's kind of funny actually, continuing the theme from the Razor that we talked about just moments ago, I also believe that this was my first assault rifle I ever bought in the game all those days back as well. I promise this isn't just some nostalgia bait video, truly. But anyways, the Carnage AR. In all honesty, this little bundle of tricks kinda continues to amaze me every time I pick the thing up. The rate of fire and the effective damage output alongside a recoil pattern like this really does welcome you to get up to just an ungodly amount of no good, if I'm being honest. The weapon's performance allows you to score some pretty accurate bursts on targets out to distances that you really wouldn't expect to hit with such a rate of fire, but it still holds its own extremely well in CQC. It's a weird jack-of-all-trades kind of gun that doesn't come with the common downsides of jack-of-all-trades weapons by being completely gutted of its damage output. But it gets better. Not only does the weapon sport a reduced cost of 650 certs by comparison to the normal 1000 cert cost we see, it also sports that oh so glorious 0.75 times ADS movement multiplier, which as you all know by now, is one of the best traits you can find on a weapon. Once you learn how to manipulate said mobility in tandem with great crosshair placement, you'll immediately become a far more competitive player in the infantry domain. And honestly, in the NC arsenal, what better weapon to learn that skill with than with the Carnage AR? There's not many out there. And last, but certainly not least for today's video, we move on to something that has a slightly slower pace to it. We've looked at a couple of, I guess, hairs in today's video, and now we move on to a tortoise by comparison. Uh, actually, okay, no, that's probably not being entirely Highly fair on the MGR L1 Promise here, but the Promise certainly encourages you to tone things down a touch here. And that comes from one very unique mechanic, that being its recoil scaling over time. The longer you hold down the trigger with the Promise here, the milder its recoil per shot gets, both from a horizontal and vertical perspective. So if you have multiple targets trying to, you know, square up on you in quick succession, your recoil pattern for the second or even third bloke will be far more in your favor, so much so to the point that you'll probably be able just to snap to his head and hardly compensate for any recoil at all. Again, this mechanic does wonders in crowd control and is sort of a more defensive environment. Now, obviously, Cone of Fire Bloom is going to become a problem as you hold down the trigger for an extended period of time. So, in a way, the weapon does kind of teach you to do the wrong thing here as well. And for that, there was some hesitation for me to even include it in today's video. But if you limit this practice to this weapon, you'll be fine. On top of that, you can also equip the heavy barrel here as well, which goes a long way in bumping up that accuracy as you kind of turn yourself into a turret with legs. With this weapon and some good positioning, you can really, really hold down the angles in ways that really weren't possible once before. And I truly believe it's an excellent light machine gun for newer players to pick up as it stands. 
I must be honest, as a little bit of a bonus remark here at the end of the video, I was actually in an earlier version of this video script going to include the GD22S. In fact, I even went as far as to getting gameplay with the GD22S for this video, because that is a notoriously easy to use light machine gun. Until I remembered that, well, that weapon is now the default weapon as of the new player experience update that happened, what, a year ago or so now? Again, just my brain being hardwired to think that the Gauss Saw still is the default weapon for the NC, but that's not the case no more. So yeah, the GD GD 22s was about to make it into this video, but the point of this series is not to talk about the default weapons, it's to offer easy to use solutions for players looking to expand their arsenal beyond the default weapons, so it would have been a bit counterintuitive to include the GD 22s in the video at the end of the day. But folks, side notes aside, that does bring today's video to a close. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of my picks here for the new conglomerate and the easiest weapons to use in their arsenal. If you've got any other suggestions, let me know down below as well. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to backhand the like button as it does go a long way to supporting the channel and if you're new here consider subscribing whilst you're at it to keep up to date with all future videos that we release as well as all future live streams we run right here on this youtube channel and as always should you wish to support the channel further please consider becoming a channel member by hitting the join button down below it does go a long way guys once again i hope you enjoyed today's video peace out and i will see you guys all in the next one take care guys have a good one